of the Weston County Health Services Board of Trustees to order. Um, I don't know who to ask if we have a quorum, but I think we do. We're all here. We do have a quorum. Okay. <laughs> election of, the next on the agenda is election of a meeting chair um, with the board's um, assent. I would like to volunteer to be the um, temporary meeting chair until after the election of officers. All in, I, is, is there yes. any so other? Let me, let me yeah. make that motion. Yeah, I move that um, Carrie, that Carrie Gross be uh, temporary, temporary, <laughs> temporary chair until the election of officers. I'm and sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Make sure you speak up because we just have speakers around the room. Microphones and talk as long as you can. Okay. Thank you. Um, all in favor of Carrie Drost as the temporary chair for the election of officers? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for your temporary confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Ted, would you lead us with the flag? I don't have a flag. I got a phone with a flag on it. Do you want me to pull the picture one? Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Are you happy? While we wait for the flag, um, Pastor Ben Roberts, would you lead us in prayer? Lord right. Jesus, we thank you for what is this beautiful day. We thank you for this community we live in. Lord, we also thank you for all the many blessings we provide, the miracles that we see every day, every day of our day. And Lord, we thank you for the blessing we receive from what is this hospital. Lord, I personally thank you for this facility that's helped me, that's helped my wife. And Lord, I thank you for my friends who have been treated here in a time spared from death. And Lord, I thank you for the staff, the caretakers, all the members of this organization, which have been called to serve you in the positions. Lord Jesus, I also want to thank you for these board members who are present, those who volunteered their precious time and have been placed by you in that position. Lord, this evening, this the new group begins and moves forward with the business of this hospital. It's my prayer, but likely also the prayer of all of this county all this community that you give them strength that you provide them courage and face the issues and lord please give them your wisdom to understand provide them your guiding name and connection lord help all the board members present along with the staff and all the righteous endeavors to be with them and the decisions they make help these decisions not be for self not be for personal good but their decisions and plans be that which glorifies you serves you serving you through efficient honest business allowing you for providing general, loving, and professional care to the community this In your holy name, we pray, O Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ben. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Next on the agenda is the election of officers. We will start with nominations for chairman, and after we elect a new chairman for the board, then the new chairman will take over the meeting and handle the elections for secretary and treasurer. 
Um, does anyone have any rules or guidelines they'd like to present or discuss? For those that are nominated, able to vote. Yes. Okay. I just want to clarify. Okay, so seeing no questions, do we have any nominations for chair? Um, I'll, I was going to nominate Ann, and the reason why I'm going to nominate Ann is I've worked with Ann for two years now. Um, I've always been able to access Ann. She's very accessible. Um, Ann is kind of like a glue for, for a lot of people. Um, I feel like in my conversations with every board member, um, everybody was, was seemed okay with that, at least that willing to work together. I think Ann understands the relationship between um, CEO and, and the chair, which is a partnership. Um, so that's why I'm nominating Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any further nominations for chair? Any further nominations for chair? I just I want to say something real quick. I don't I don't think that I am the smartest one in this room. I'm not sure I'm the best leader. But what I want more than anything is I want us to work as a team, and I want all of us to be able to um, to agree, and I want all of us to disagree, and still be able to come at the end and and make our votes and get the best. I want. I want to get the best out of all seven of us. And I think that's how we'll come to the best decisions. Great. I move nom nominations, please. Hearing the, do we have a second on the motion to cease nominations? I'll second. Motion made and seconded. I don't, no discussion on that, right? Is there a discussion? No, all not right. necessarily on that. But <laughs> if there was a couple of them, maybe. Okay. Yeah. All in favor of Ann Slagel as our new chair? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous. Congratulations, Madam Chair. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's all yours? It's all mine. <laughs> so, okay, so the next order of business. Thank you, guys. By the way, all of you. Thank you. I will, I will do my best. To help us um, so, on to secretary. Do we have any nominations for secretary? Madam Chairman, I would like to nominate Nick. I'll second that. Any other nominations? All any discussions? Okay, all those in favor of Nick being the secretary, say aye. 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 Okay, um, and now uh, treasurer. Um, do we have any nominations for treasurer? I'd like to nominate Kira. That will second. Okay. Have any other <laughs> nominations? Okay, all those or any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of Kerry as treasurer say aye. 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 Okay, very good. So now, now the work begins. <laughs> um, okay, so are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Madam Chair, I have a few. Um, the first being item, uh, I'm not good with Roman numerals, 10, 15, 17, <laughs> so, uh, executive session. Can we move that up before adjour adjournment? Yes. Okay. okay. Are, are um, we all in good with that? I think we have to. Yeah, it has to be part of the thing, I think. Yeah, it has to. Um, and where, where would you like to move it to? Uh, just move it up. So move a journey yeah. down to the end. Yes. Yep. Swap. Swap them out. Um, and then I had two additional changes. Probably under new business, could we add the packaging machine for long-term care? Yeah. 
That was that was close. And um, two discussion, uh, actually three discussion items. Um, one being bylaws, and in bylaws, uh, the meeting time. We can discuss that. Uh, the next being advertising, and the next being board communication. And, and where do you want to put that? Um, can we put them all of them under new business? We can just add them under privacy coach. Is that fair? Is does anybody else see a better spot for it? And um, anything else? Yes. Madam Chair, I would like to uh, include in probably some place in your agenda. Is it about an executive session? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So would you see a good spot for that? I would uh, under new business. New business. Okay. Under new board communication. That'd be fine. Okay. Board communication. And what did you call it? Uh, executive session. session. And it's a discussion about it. Just thinking about this, Ted, um, did you get your answer as far as the, the, the paying for advertising? I, no, so I guess I did. We should ask. Okay. So, first. one of the things that I added was advertising. No, that's fine. Um, anything else we see for agenda? Um, I I think we don't have this on the agenda. We need to talk about what committees we're going to be on. Um, I'm not sure whether we just do that right now or we wait till right. the bylaws. Okay. Say that at this point, the chair is heads of so then, and then, then the members. Yeah. So we should just do that right now. Then. Okay, so committees. Yes, we need to take care of the motion. Okay, is there anything else as far as? Adding to the adding or subtracting from the agenda. I want to add this to you as the president from eight to eight. Okay. Uh, okay. And we're we're trying to set that up. That's C. I think that's C. E. C for new business. Business yeah. communication. Do you just want to do it at president communication? No, okay. under new business. Oh, okay, there we go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, under provider contract? No. That's private coach. Yeah, that's not the Oh, that's okay. Sorry, it is not that same one. I thought it was high. Let's 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 put this on new business, right. and we'll just put it. Um, how about we just we'll just add it to the end. We'll talk about it at, after the executive session minutes. Stuff. We'll just right. keep adding it to the end. Okay. okay. So I don't remember who did we have a motion to accept the agenda as changed? No. Okay, so we need that. So we need somebody to so we will accept. Very good. Day. I will second. Okay, thank you, Ted. Okay, um, so now if we're going to figure out. Can, what's it? Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, everybody who accepts the um, agenda is changed. I would say aye. 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 Oh, all good. Any knows? 
Okay, so now I, if we're going to figure out committees, I want to hear everybody's. Um, Nathan, do you have, or you're the, you seem to know all the bylaws quite well. <laughs> okay, you've got to do. Okay, so we need, we need to figure out, I, I want to hear from each person which, one, what they think their strengths are, and also what, if they have a committee they would like to be a part of. Um, so, um, Nick, will you, do you just, are you up to starting? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I've been serving on the quality committee for the last two years. Um, I feel like, you know, I've, I've been learning quite a bit. I've learned quite a lot. Um, I'd like to continue with that just because I feel like I'm starting to build a rapport with everybody in there. Um, so I, if possible, um, and that, that's where I would like to stay if, if, what about you, Mary? Do you have well? Actually, before we start with the new ones, somebody who has their bylaws in front, make it. Tell us what the options are. For well, the well, you got, well, you're starting with quality committee. You have three trustees on that. Currently, have three on them. Yes. Well, the bylaws have bylaws three. It consists of three. Bylaws, of course, administrator, public director, chief operator, but three right. trustees. Three trustees. What they're yeah. Looking for, I would say. On that. Okay, and then, the, and then the finance committee. The finance committee. How many on that? The finance committee. You're looking for the treasurer is going to be on that. At least two other trustees. Okay. Plus two. Okay. The joint conference committee. You are looking for. Uh, Medical staff committee closes two members of the board of trustees <coughs> and so one two. rotating member of the board of trustees. Two, two steady plus one rotating. So we probably just are going to need to take turns on that. Okay, and then the, um, the governance committee. Uh, governance committee. Uh, vice president, secretary, and additional trustees. So actually three, but two of them got it the president and the secretary. Madam Chair, I have a comment about governance. Since governance has been nothing but a problem for this board in the past, and since this new board is going to be discussing bylaw changes, I personally would like to make a motion at some point to strike 99.9% .9 of the governance committee, if not the whole entire thing. Um, so my suggestion would be maybe not, um, not appointing any members to the governance committee until this new full board has a bit of time to go through the bylaws and discuss the changes we might want to make and see if we even want to, as a board, continue the governance committee. It's just a suggestion. I would love to hear how the rest of the board feels about that. Madam Chair, I, I what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Makes that the board may want to change that. But these are our current bylaws. And I, the written and settlement bill, they're, they're changed. So uh, I would not intend to disagree with what you saying does make Fair sense. Enough. But I, I think that we ought to follow the steps. We may not have time looking at this agenda to discuss bylaws in depth to want to have, go ahead and make those changes. Fair enough. What, what's everybody else opinion? So we, well, we need to establish a governance committee in the for now, then? Is that something? Well, that, that's what Ted is right, saying. That's what you're looking to do. So. So how do we do this in a way that doesn't create kind of the tension that it did before? Because um, we all know the governance board was created for the purpose of kind of getting everybody prepared for the meetings. That was the intent, right? Um, and somewhere along the way, that got either, either um, I guess everybody has different opinions about that. But the reality is, so how do we do this in a way where um, we get everybody to to trust that board. I don't know how we do that, that the governance committee, but I think it's not in the bylaws that states that it has to be the officers, correct? Yeah, it does say president, 
So it does. So that would be us. So that okay. So there's so that would have to be us. See, and that's right. So we're out of So we might as well just think on that first moment. I'm perfectly happy to talk about. It says that and an additional trustee, not that several trustees could be put on. So the question becomes the quorum. Yes. Yeah. That's where we're. So does that mean we rotate maybe two? To officers, and then somebody sits, steps in and sits in, or how does that work? Ted's point is a fair one in that if the the bylaws say we should do it, we should do it. It doesn't say we have to be. Doesn't say the governance committee has to be right. So but the government and talk about it. The governance committee or, does review whatever. and amend the board of trustees bylaws. So that's so where a bylaw change should okay. start, and there. Their recommendation to be brought back to the board at that time. Okay. So I don't think there would be anything that would prevent the board to meet together because the bylaws first to amend the bylaws on the first page. It says any proposed changes have to be presented to the entire board prior to that meeting. And so I, I see no problem with us all being together uh, during we could add it to each and all three. I have a suggestion. So, how about we do the exact opposite of my last suggestion and make the governance board the entire sitting board? But with those, what the bylaws say. It says. And a additional trustee. Yeah. An additional trustee. I don't know that that is limited to just one. Or, uh, it depends on how you want to read that. I suppose. So, let's see. Indefinite part. Yeah. <laughs> and if we're going to discuss bylaws changes, we're all going to want to be I'm in very, the discussion, so we might as well just have it. I've grabbed a lot of ideas from bylaws. So if you need to stick one more person on there. Okay. Well, we don't have to. So, okay. So this, I believe these are all in means. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Foundation. The Polish oh, Foundation. And ethics. Did you get ethics? ethics? Foundation um, and ethics. Good job. So the foundation is and ethics are foundation is one, I believe. Yeah. And ethics is two. They're under the special. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're the special not the any of the time. <laughs> like, By monthly account. Okay. Because it's not okay. specified it in the order. It does not specify special. So, but yeah. 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 So let's yeah, say <laughs> if everybody is in agreement, we've got everything written. Now we'll go through and we'll. So Nick already said he is interested in quality. Um, yeah, quality. Um, Oh, sorry. Yes, Nathan said governance. Nick said quality. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mary, do you have what do you can? And I always feel bad about this. We're happy to say what you prefer on your first meeting. Oh, ethics meets once every quarter rather than once every month. Kareem, <laughs> <laughs> what do you Um, I think I would be most interested in the foundation <laughs> and Potentially, maybe to be like one of the protein or or on the joint conference. Okay. Okay, Carrie. Um, I mine's my time to make a well, tell just us tell what us you, what you want. <laughs> well, I am, um, yeah, I'm an automatic on finance. Uh, finance, and I would really love to uh, work with Nathan on finance. And I think our two nurses would be wonderful on quality. Okay, Ted, what, what do you 
what are you interested in? I'm knowing a lot about these committees, it's a little hard to pick and choose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'll just skip over you. Well, Nathan said he's interested in governance and what else? Yeah, governance, finance, joint commission. Okay. I've had a long time to take <laughs> Okay, so, so I can repeat that. So I think we say governance first, uh -huh. and then finance. Okay. And then the joint commission. Um, okay, you Ted, now you're next. On your bylaws, like My part. <laughs> Governing? Sure. <laughs> Anything else that you're interested in? Okay. Okay, so let's see. Nick, the quality seems easiest to me. Nick, um, Mary, and Kareem. Is that did you guys agree to that? I mean, are, so <laughs> <laughs> offer to be yeah. on quality. Are you happy to be on quality? I, I like that on nurses on quality. That's fine. That's so fine. one of the things it meets at 8 a.m. Can you speak up a little oh, bit? 8 a.m. when? So it meets at 8 a.m. Um, every Wednesday of the board meeting. So we met yesterday. So the first win the third Wednesday of each month. That's the difference. So that 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 is something to consider too when going on these because what you have is availability. You know, and, and is there does anybody have opinions on by like is that something we can change in the bylaws that it's not meeting at that time? It's not in the bylaws. It's not it in the bylaws. Not not committee that's committee something to change. And I would say that. the committee chairman selects. Right. Okay. So it's um so. Yes. I own that meeting. Yes. <laughs> Change that anytime. Okay. Um, we can figure out a time that works for everybody okay. and okay. We can make it work for you guys. Okay. It doesn't have to be the third Wednesday at 8. It can be Whatever's whenever it's okay. convenient for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I too would not like it to get 8. Okay, so um, finance. Can we put um, Harry, Ed, and Nathan? Yeah. And finance currently meets, I want to say, at 4 o'clock on, on the Tuesday, Tuesday before the meeting. Um, but again, if that doesn't work for you guys, that can be changed as well. Second No, the the same. So two days before the Thursday. Oh, okay. Yep. So I think it's we need a third Thursday, yeah. right? So we third Tuesday. Third Tuesday. Except this one. <laughs> Perfect. So. Just before we finish on this, this is something I don't know. How, what, what's your opinions? How, who, how many of these committees should I be on as chair? Well, according to the bylaws, you're a member of, you're a standing member of all of them. Is that, is, I don't think so. Think no, according to bylaws, you're a uh, nominating government committee. Uh, you're not. That's very interesting. What about ethics? That's what I've been on. Okay. I, was I don't think yeah, it's not anywhere really really except for the government. government. Yeah. Okay, so back to, sorry for that interruption. Um, so the Joint Conference Committee, let's see, we had. Nathan and Kareem. So, Nathan, 
do you have time to be on these committees? Well, when does it meet? <laughs> Somebody should know. Um, the joint conference meets quarterly, so we meet January, April, July, October. Okay. Okay, so um, Kareen and and Nathan on the joint conference committee. Um, governance that will be <coughs> Miss. And then we are gonna so both both the joint conference committee and the governance committee, we will we will rotate people in and out. We'll just go down the line and rotate. Unless we find that's not working. If we find that's not working, then we'll make some changes. Um, foundation. Kareen, are you good for that or do you feel like you're starting to get on too many? <laughs> Who else wants to have foundation? Somebody else? Nathan. Oh, Nathan's already on a lot too. <laughs> I don't think they're reading really often right now, but I understand, so I think that would be okay. Okay, so Kareen, you're on foundation as well. And ethics, um, Mary, you said you want it to be? I will be, yeah. Okay, so can I, and then I will put myself on that also. <laughs> Um, no, oh. foundation just has one. Oh, just one. Yeah. Oh. And um, so, let's see. So, Nick, I've got you on quality and governance. And is that, is that all I said? Are you happy with that? Just being on yeah. You? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mary, I've got you on quality and ethics. Is that good? Kareen, I've got you on quality, joint conference, and foundation. Okay. Good. And here, oh, here. May I have a person in joint joint conference committee? Yes. Okay. Um, it might be. Unless Ed wants it. <laughs> well, I was going to make when you're finished. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're next. Okay, me so being next. On I am on finance currently, which uh, I know it's quite a job, but still. Mm -hmm. I would look down through there and see where you're short on the trustee on the board. Okay, so, so uh, governance is the governance is the other. So, do you want to be on governance? Sure. Okay. Okay, so I just effectively got rid of both our rotating ones. Um, good. So, and Nathan, I have you down for finance. Joint conference and can't go more than four. Oh, right. Can't go more than three. Can't go more than four. I'm a little, okay. we're, were we going to rotate somebody that's, on all? That's what I wanted. <laughs> so, have, so you can just rotate me on whatever. Okay. Okay. So, so it might be that you and Ted tend to be the ones that rotate on and off of that governance. So, so, I don't know. Oh, it's third Wednesdays, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it is usually third Wednesdays. Okay. I don't know what time, but. We can nine. I want to say nine thirty. Just nine thirty. We can nine. So, or I don't. We think, can make that. We I mean, can make. Yeah, we right. can figure out what time. But that's uh, we can't. I can't do that. How long is the quality? Quality meets every month. Just once a month. Yeah, once a month. Once a month. Okay. Uh, finance meets once a month. Joint conference is <coughs> three. Is every three months. Governance is how we decide. Foundation varies. 
and ethics is every once every three months. Okay, are we good to go? Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So now we need to. Has everybody seen the minutes? Yes. It appears that you need to. Um, well, one of the things we do is invite the chairman for each one of those. Yes. yes, I do. Thank you for reminding me, Ted. <laughs> okay, so, um, Nick, will you be doing your call? Yeah. Okay. Um, here is automatically chair. Yes, that? Can you, oh, yeah. Is that okay if you guys can that? Definitely. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> Nathan, are you up? I don't know how I'm not sure there's a chair. I'm not sure there's a chair on that. No, I think it's mostly meeting with the with it. Yeah. So so we'll just Treasurer will report out. We'll report out here. And governance, I will I'll share that one. Um, Foundation again. That's not. You don't really. The foundation right. chairs chair right. and ethics. Do you want to share that? You want to? You can. I'm sure. It's great. On your joint conference committee, it says be co-chaired by the chief of staff black. That is, and a member of the board of trustees. Co-chair. Okay. So Nathan, I'm going to make you. Co-chair on that. The okay. okay. So now, I think I think we should have a motion to approve those approve those committee assignments. Okay. I have a second. I'll second. Who made the motion? Thank you. We all, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say aye. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, let's go on to the minutes. Did everybody have a chance to read those two sets of minutes? Or the, were they available to the four of you? And plus, I, you didn't swear there anymore. Okay. Have not seen both of those. So, so that I really think either Nick or Stuart should make the motion. I thought they were good. I'll move. Second. Great. Okay. okay. Um. Now on to was that did that include both the Regular meeting and the special meeting, Nick? Yes. Okay. Are you good with that second? That there's the regular and the special? Yep. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so um, next on the agenda is visitor comments. Do we have any comments? I have one. I, I received a complaint from a medical staff member and, uh, communicating with our outpatient services department. Apparently, we all have uh, discussed this uh, quality committee, and it hasn't uh, been a medical staff committee at the best later on. And I just want to ask if, as a board today in the executive session, if you come to any conclusion about what you want to do with that, I'd like to give me a call and let the medical staff know you can involve that study. So Does anybody you. have your number? Uh, I have a question. Okay, so I'm unaware of. Of what you're talking about. Well, I, I talked to people who, you know, staff members who were at that meeting. Oh. And the house is going to be handled and, and okay. it's going to be presented to you tonight by your CEO. I, just, okay. I don't believe any medical staff person has been involved in discussions about how to handle this. Um, so are you wanting to join in? If I could, yes. If, if you have one, I'd like to explain. Okay. If you don't have one, that's I think you for Okay. Is there any other? Visitor comments? Okay. So I I want to say that as chair, I do um, 
my hope and goal is to include visitor comments and to uh, I want to give and take between the community and um, and so keep me accountable on that. Make sure I'm I'm being a chair that's giving and taking. So. Um, okay, CEO report. Yes. Thank you. First off, we are investing in our compliance, risk, privacy, and security programs. We're investing in our electronic connector record. We did have our state trauma survey last week. Of the business and they, they did give us a professional status. It is state. It stated we need to beef up our compliance and QA quality assurance program as well as recommended to select, select someone as a trauma manager. And I do want to say a big thank you, and they did to Deb Haka, Director of Basic Care Services, and Dr. Franklin as well. And they will return in one year. The community needs assessment has to be completed in 2024. I uh, brought this before the board a couple months ago. We have one bid from Ready Health at 25000 waiting on a bid from the line to submit the proposal. And then uh, we'll bring it to the board uh, uh, for a vote on those. Radiology construction films will begin a uh, de installation of the old room on June 30th and delivery of the new room on July the 8th with an installation taken approximately two weeks, then training after that. The bulk oxygen bids are uh, will be in, have to be in by the 21st of May to Mike Gassing, uh, but Christian Terrible. The drawings have been sent to the state, so we're waiting for state approval. The state bar marshal did approve those uh, drawings. And the 2023 audit will be presented from DZA out of Washington State uh, at the June board meeting. So will it be finished, do you think? Sure. Will it be finished, the audit? Yes. But it's on the G-board. That's when they will present. That will be the 2023. <laughs> Is there any other? Is that the Okay. Um, how do we want to handle the finance? Do you want to? Do you want to give us Jennifer? Do you want to? Do you want to give us some the the sure. highlights? Sure. Okay. Um, I brought. It. So for so what a cash flow report is? Can I get one? Yeah. There's one. Does, does everybody here have one? So that is year to date. So that is from June fiscal year. So that's from July first till April thirtieth. Is what that report is. So what a cash flow report is is it's all of our money. So that's all the money that is in our bank account. So any money that has come in, it doesn't matter if it's our taxes, if it's our grant, if it's um, our AR, any money that has come into the hospital district is under, that's where you'll find it for the, for the income. And the expenses is anything that has left the hospital district to the penny. So for this month, for the operating receipts, we have 20 million three hundred and forty one thousand six hundred and seventy eight dollars and ninety three cents the retail pharmacy is four million one hundred and seventy nine dollars four hundred and sixty three dollars and sixty one cents the merchant account is one million two hundred and seventy nine thousand seven hundred and seventy eight dollars and sixty nine cents the money market interest so this is just the interest is one hundred and fifteen thousand three hundred and fifty three dollars and eighty three cents I vidified $70,781.57. The Harry Ackley interest is $21.61. The Harry Ackley Memorial CD interest is $1,333.04. Operating disbursement is $53,193.14.
the monthly income was $26,041,604.42. So the difference for like the operating receipts from last month to this month, we are down $677,000. $173.41. The retail pharmacy has gone up $122,024.06. The money market interest has gone up $1,169.39. Uh, so for our expenses, for like our all of our like bills and payroll was $19,858,526.05. Returned items, so like if it was like a bad check that was returned, it was $12,364. Uh, hospital district pharmacy, so that's the cardinal that comes out of the operating receipts account, was... Oh, am I reading the totals? Yeah, I'm reading the totals. <laughs> I know, I'm just to clarify, the totals that you're reading are year to date, not month. You said monthly totals, but they're not. They're year to date. Yeah, right. So I just don't want anyone to think we had $26 million a month. <laughs> <laughs> I got nervous. I get it. I get okay. it. I was following so you. my report is different than yours. I blew mine up so I could read, and it was only the two months and then the total. So I got oh, nervous. Yeah. So do you want me to start over, or do you want me just to give you the... the Green grass in the thing. So for our income, we have two million four hundred and ninety-five thousand four hundred and thirty dollars and seven cents was our income for our, this year. For, for no, this just month. for this month. I was reading the totals for the year, guys. Um, the operating expenses for all of our expenses was two million two hundred eighty-one thousand nine hundred twenty-four dollars and seventy-nine cents. So for the month, we are negative $161,211.39. Year to date, it would be negative $248,828.65. Um, so yeah. you're off. I'm still <laughs> So you're for April. Yeah, for April, there was $2,495,430 in income yes. and $2,281,924 in outflows, leaving a uh, profit, so to speak, of $374,760 a month. No, because we have outstanding checks. It's a loss of 161,211.39. Can I make a statement just to clear up some confusion? So, by my calculations for the fiscal year so far, I think we have a month or so left. The bank account has gone down. So, that's this number. I'll edit them up just to check. I don't even know that. So, that's really the big takeaway yeah, that's, that's is our bank one. account is one and a half million dollars smaller here today. Correct. Um, we have two million one hundred and twenty six thousand four hundred and thirty three dollars and eighty two cents in CDs and two CDs. One is the forty five thousand carry Ackley CD that we just used the interest on. Um, our cash right now is four million seven hundred forty-seven thousand eight hundred and twenty-two seventy, and that's as of today. These are as of today, so I'm reading right now. So Jennifer, is it okay, man? Um, if I added up the CD and the checking and all the things, I think we can consider basically cash. What about the total? What would this total be? Give me those numbers. Uh, one more time. The total of our savings. Total of our savings and cash. So CD. So our money. cash is four million seven hundred forty-seven thousand eight hundred twenty-two seventy. Our CDs is two million one hundred twenty-six thousand four hundred thirty-three dollars and eighty-two cents. We and have this. The CDs. How long is the cash required? To be? So we have two CDs. The forty-five thousand dollars CD. What I've been told is that it's for. We take that the interest of it and then it goes into our Harry Ackley 
bank account, and then it's for education purposes. That's what I was told. So CDs are time deposits. There's typically yes. a big penalty that this yes. us from using that. You know, uh, you can follow up with me later. I just want to know if you know. So my job, what I do on a daily basis, is I am with the APPR specialist. And when um, my predecessor, when my boss left, we didn't have anybody in the accounting system, in the accounting department. I've taken on what all of my stuff that I'm doing, and I'm adding all of the other stuff that is, you know, kind of going to the wayside, which there's so much that, you know, takes two or three people to do. And so I don't know all of the information that you're asking I'm not at this trying time. to put you on the spot. I just wanted to know if you so um <clears throat> out of our money market and I can give you this too. The last time that we took money out of our money market we put one million five hundred and ten thousand dollars out of our money market this year. But that was before November eighth. We have not taken any money out after November eighth. But since then we have put in three million one hundred and sixty four thousand dollars and sixty five cents. Three million one hundred and sixty four thousand dollars and sixty five cents. Three million one hundred and sixty four thousand and sixty Three million one hundred sixty-four thousand sixty-five. Oh. That's since November, December. Yes, that has been. Yes, that has been. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. And they've gone you through. You want to look at them first? 
Um, they have gone through medical staff as well. Um, so they've looked at them, approved them, and so you guys are kind of the last step in that. Quality of folks taking care of it. I'm good with that way. I'll make a motion to approve those. I'll second. Ever, ever, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Okay. Um, so here we've got finance committee, medical staff credentialing, medical staff report. Um, so medical staff, um, we met um, last month, obviously. Um, so we talked about our back orders. We've got Rissy McEpi, it's still on back order. Um, Joy gave some information about the back orders that some manufacturers are pulling out and no longer producing some medicines. Um, so we might have some issues going forward with more medicines in the future. Um, she's keeping a good eye on our medication supply and making sure that we've got what we need. Um, there was uh, some need in the manner for some carbidopa levodopa, which is a Parkinson's type medication. I'm needing a liquid form of it. Um, so she was working to try to find that so we can compound it for one of our um, residents over there that needs it to fall the form, not so much the pill form. Um, radiology, we talked about CT contrast guidelines. Um, so patients with a poor GFR, and a GFR is part of the kidney function testing. Um, anybody with a poor GFR of less than 44 <clears throat> needs to have an updated value within two days of the contrast just to make sure that we can that contrast. Um, so that's a new um, protocol kind of coming out of there. So we discussed that. Um, and we just kind of wanted to develop a standing order so that radiology doesn't have to call over every single time to say, hey, can I get a doctor's order for this? Um, so if we just have that standing order or protocol, um, that order will just be there when it's needed. Um, oral contrast, we talked about that as well. Um, the barium contrast is going to be going away per Dakota radiology recommendations. Imaging these days is so good that they don't need that barium. Um, and Keisha gave some education that the barium can actually cause some issues with the imaging because it is so good these days that it can cause um, like shadowing or something like that within the imaging. Um, ultrasound. Um, the gentleman was supposed to be here last week to try and let us know if heard him. So um, you're gonna, he's gonna come and just kind of check the gals off on like their final carotid um, testing and make sure. And then once they're checked off, we'll start opening that up for outpatient scans. Um, so the two gals will do back scanning on each other. And basically back scanning is I scan the patient, <coughs> I turn where I see, she comes in behind, scans and says, yep, I agree. So, um, and then the x-ray room, we kind of touched on that. Um, it's gonna be good to go July, June 3rd for demolition, should be up and running by rally, so. Um, lab, we were working on getting some spot fire quotes for the clinic. Um, he was just working on negotiating a lower price. Um, so we'll probably discuss that at this next meeting, what his findings were. Um, nursing home report, we had 41 residents at the time. Um, no admissions slated for that last couple weeks in there. Um, but we were waiting for some discharge paperwork on a community member, I believe, out of Casper. So we're still waiting for that. Um, so we do have some. Uh, additionals, I think, coming here in the next couple weeks. So, Denise is having a hard time hearing you. Oh, sorry, I'll I'll speak up. Um, okay, so that's all I have for med staff. On to quality. Wait, do we have any questions? Oh yeah. That Anybody have questions? Okay. All right. Quality. So this is our platform that we use for our performance improvement and our event reporting system. Um, so this is our dashboard. All of the staff get access to this. So this right here is our dashboard of all of the performance measures that we're working on. Um, so if you were to click in, get in here and click on, say, emergency, you can see here all of the uh, performance measures that we're working on within here. So this is where I get a lot of my data from. So this ED transfer times um, is a measure that we do track. Anyways, so we've got our benchmark in here and you can see when we're not meeting our benchmark, it tells you where we want to be on our benchmarks. The lower is better. The critical level, if we're 15 points above this benchmark, it'll flag it red. And it would have been interesting to see how many 
votes may have changed because of Gordon's actions, because of the response of their communities after those bills were passed, specifically the gun-free zone bill. I think that I think that we would have very much seen a change in votes on that one. I think you would have seen more nay votes on that than you had before. Are so you're saying that uh that some folks were counting on the governor veto in that one. I very much 100% think that especially school districts, courthouses, places like that were banking that the governor was going to go no way are we letting guns in these areas. And I think that their response afterwards may or may not have swayed some of those representatives and senators to vote a different way because the response was strong. And you can see when we're not meeting our benchmark, it tells you where we want to be on our benchmarks. The lower is better. The critical level, if we're 15 points above this benchmark, it'll flag it red. Um, so this is how we get our information. All of the managers have performance measures that they document on. And so every meeting for quality, we take a look at the dashboard. We go through all of the events. Um, board members question all of the events that come in. You guys have access. So you can ask questions on what's going on. Um, so this is action cue. And you guys will get a little bit more training, um, especially my new quality. You'll get more training on that, um, how to access things what to look at. Um, once you get comfortable in it, it's very user friendly. Um, let's see here. Patient satisfaction surveys, um, about 1,200 of them went out last month and 16.77 of them came back, which is about 2% increase from last month. Um, current number of temp staff, um, we've got five temp staff, we've got four CNAs in the long-term care and one in acute care. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw on Facebook, but we had our Daisy slash Petal launch party on Monday. Monday. Um, so the Daisy Award, for all of you that are unfamiliar, is a international award for nurses. Um, it was developed by a patient that had passed away. His family wanted to thank the nurses that he had had during his care. Um, so they developed this award. And we have decided to bring it to our facility as a way to thank our nurses and recognize our nurses for all the good care that they give. Um, and so we have decided to also do a, what's called a pedal award, which is going to be for our non-nursing staff. So that's anybody that comes in contact with the patient, um, the support staff, to thank them as well and recognize them um, for all the good work that they do as well. And so nominations from that come from the community and the patients, um, typically can come from other staff members, doctors, um, but we're really hoping to get that community involvement. Um, another thing we're working on is our five-star quality rating in the manner. Um, so that's a quality measure that um, is reported out quarterly to CMS and everything like that. Um, so our five-star rating right now went from a, I believe a three or four-star down to a one-star. And so we figured out when our residents go from um, the long-term care over to the ER, but they don't get admitted, it dings our quality score. Um, so we've been working with the providers to do more outpatient care. Um, so ordering labs, ordering x-ray on some of the residents before just sending them to the ER um, to see if we can't treat these um, residents outpatient wise. Mm -hmm. And then our ED wait times, you know, we're right here. ED wait times are looking good. Our ED arrival to transfer is just a little bit high. Um, and that's because we've been seeing some um, hospital diversion. Um, our providers have been accepting, but those providers need a little bit more testing done, which then delays the patient from getting out the door. Um, so that's why our numbers are a little high these days. Um, but down a lot from COVID days, so. Um, home health, everything's going good. Heaven's got a new nurse start in what, a couple weeks. A couple weeks. Um, clinic survey return rate, we had an increase of 1%. It was at 18.7 return rates. And then pharmacy, Joy's going to talk about the packaging machine. So, all good things. Any questions at all on quality? Yeah. 
Nick, do you want to, do you have anything else to add to the quality committee report? No, I think you're going to talk about the fact that she, that was the one thing I was going to mention, but she says it's, I said, Joy was going to talk about it, so, uh, no. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, old business, radiology, construction, I think. Okay. Is, I keep looking for Keisha. Is she not here tonight? Uh, she's sticking her mom at the table. Oh, good. Um, the governance committee, I don't think we have a report for that. Does anybody? Okay. Um, finance committee. Um, do we have Randy, do we have any reports for this? Like, I don't have anything. Utilization. Uh, no, we are working on that. Uh, and Durban and Associates will really touch base on that on the department. And uh, everything else will make a call. I missed that. Oh, okay. All right. Then we're working on the, uh, the provider uh, reports. Uh, Right, so we have no utilization statistics or anything. No. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 They built the budget, there was no depreciation uh, built in there or contractual analysis. And so. Okay, and um, communication. I don't. I've not been president long enough to communication. <laughs> Other than, like I said right at the beginning, I I want to do my very best with this board to to work as a team. I want to I want us to be able to agree. I want us to be able to disagree, and I want us to be able to come together and make good decisions. Okay, Durbin. I'm I'm um, there he is. Can you hear me? Yep. You can hear me? Yep. Okay. I've got just a quick slideshow I would like to share if that's possible. It's three or four slides, just I want to kind of give you a, a bullet point if that's okay with you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I won't. And I don't know what you can see, so hopefully you can see a dark screen that says Wesson County. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we, 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 we were asked to give an assessment of the financial accounting department, kind of what's been going on, what hasn't been going on. And so we had a staff up there about two weeks ago, and what I've done, I've just put together a list of what we have found, where we sit. So we had, we had a staff up there April 29th to the 3rd, and this is what we've found. The audit for 2023 is not finished. I know as of today, there are a couple of items that they, we've been in an email thread with the audit group of, of DZA. A couple of items I've asked for in order to meet that uh, June board meeting. Um, not all bank reconciliations have been completed. There's about 10 different bank accounts that have not been reconciled since 6.30 of 23. Money, monthly accounting entries have not been complete. And currently it looks like there's no staff or limited staff in order to make those monthly entries. Fixed asset and depreciation schedules are incomplete. And I believe the uh, uh, audit firm and also the prior uh, group that was working on it is, is keeping those uh, fixed asset and depreciation schedules. We've asked to get copies of prior years in order to help move that forward. Um, on the balance sheet, there's other amortization schedules, just not complete, other assets. AP had not been reconciled since June 30th, 2023. We have some entries for student loan repayments that haven't been made since June 30th, 2023. There's another, we found one student loan for which uh, HR is keeping a manual repayment schedule. It's not on the general ledger. CIP goes along with our depreciation schedule, has not been set up. The Meditech, you're in the middle of a server change or a computer system change. You're going from Meditech over to Sage. Um, and I know the Sage numbers are supposed to be converted as of 2-1. There's been numbers put into the new accounting system as of 1-1, one, one, which you didn't go live until 2-1. And some of the in some of the balances that were brought over into Sage as of one one were not correct. 
Um, payroll is being generated through ADP, so there's manual entries that are still having to be made. And obviously, you all know that current financial statements are not being generated. Uh, again, we've been asked to do a, just kind of a quick analysis, you know, assessment of where things stand. And so that's the quick down and dirty of where things stand. Um, I am open for questions, and, and hopefully we have some questions and thoughts of how the board wants to move forward and, and how we can help in that process. I know that's a lot of information really quick, so if I've gone too fast, please tell me, and I can go back through those slides. Uh, can you please, just so we all know what this, the scope of your service is and, and what we've engaged you to do and accomplish? So what we were asked to do is just give an assessment of where, and if you're okay, I'm going to, well, y'all can still see me okay. Sorry, I'm. y'all are really small on my screen. We were asked to give an assessment of, of what does the accounting department look, or what are the, what are the financial statements look like? um currently uh when we came up in in january to meet with the board you know we wanted we always believe that having audited numbers that, that's your basis and that's your starting point and moving you know we can go ahead and start looking at what things have been done and what things have not been done and so that's what we spent our time was looking at what has happened in fiscal year 24 inside the system that's what we've been engaged to, that's what we've been asked to do up to this point And so this is just a summary of what we found when we had staff on site. We have been asked to help with, you know, with the budget for the current year, the next uh, upcoming year. Um, we're, we're working on that now. And I know that's due here in the next uh, week, I believe. Um, but at that point, at this point, that's what we've been engaged to do. We have no engagement letter to do additional services, kind of waiting on this assessment in order for the board to make a decision on how we want to move forward, if we want to move forward. Is there a way for us, like, I would really like a printed version of what you just told us? Is that possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can, I can email that to your group. Absolutely. And can you do it um, soon? I can do it as soon as we get, as soon as I stop talking. Okay. I guess I could actually do it while we're talking if you want me to. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing here. <clears throat> Question, Tommy, how do we move forward from here? And have you had any discussions with anyone, Randy or anyone, on proposals for getting us where we need to go or a plan? We, 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 we have, have, I have visited, I have visited with Randy and Sandy and I'm, and I'm not sure who else was on that last one of the last meetings about kind of what 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 our thoughts would be, you know, and how can we help and move forward. Um, but again, there's been no proposal given. There's been no fee set or anything like that with our firm at, at this point. Again, when we when we came up in January, we were asked to kind of give a update of what do we see, you know, what what does it look like? And we waited. We wanted to wait. We wanted to wait for that audit to be done because again, if the beginning of the year numbers are solid with an audited financial statement then we can really tell what's going on. That way we don't have to worry about 630, 23 and prior. We're going to focus on, you know, this fiscal year. Uh, we waited a little while, wait, we're waiting for DZA to wrap that up. And I know there's been communication going back and forth. Like I said, I think they had two open items in the email thread I saw today. And so now we can look and that we can sit down and figure out how do we want to attack it? You know, how do you want to attack it? These, these are your financials as a board and management. And how can we help? You, can you tell us briefly what you told? Um, sure, sure. We've got, and, and so we've got a lady named Patty. We've got a staff that came up and spent a week there. Um, we can, one, we, we don't want to be, nor do you want us to be your daily CFO on site. I mean, that's just realistically. You, you don't want that and we don't want that either, right? Um, we can provide a ton of support remotely. We can do a lot of work remotely. Um, but what I told Randy is, we really need somebody on the ground that works for your facility to be doing a lot of the legwork. I mean, at the end of the day, that is the goal. And, and, and I told Randy, I think I told the board this when I was January, we want to help you work ourselves out of a job. We want to get you caught up and get through the crisis and hopefully be able to help train people in order you know, to move you forward. That would really be our a goal and objective. Can that happen in 30 or 60 days? Realistically, not going to. When you're looking now at 11 months worth of activity, 
that's going to have to be caught up on. Not That's just not realistic in a 30 or 60 day window. How long would it take? I honestly can't tell you that. Um, I explained to them yesterday, you, usually the first couple of months when we have cleanup situations, the first couple of months are usually the real struggles because you're having to go. And especially we have no history with, with your organization. So we're having to go and dig and figure things out. What we have found historically with cleanups after the first couple of months, we kind of figure out where things weren't take, weren't taken care of. You know, kind of, we can help usually it starts going faster and faster with the cleanup after the first couple of months of cleanup. Um, but I can't give you a time frame. I mean, I, I don't want to lie to you. I want to tell you it could be three months and it not. I, I just don't want to do that. Um, my thought, again, my thought is to have somebody on site, one or two people that can just focus on it and help. And, and we can do, like I said, we've, um, Patty, the lady that w- came up, she is an ex, she was a CFO for 25 years and a CEO. She retired and got bored a year later. So we hired her. She called us and said, can I work greens? Like, Absolutely. And so she's got 30 plus years in that role. And that's why we love to put her on these kind of jobs is she's been there. She has sat behind that desk and, and fought those battles, but you don't want to pay us her full rate to be your daily CFO. I mean, just being honest with you, we'll do whatever we can to help you get through this. But the goal would, again, would be to have somebody on site that can do a lot of the legwork, the, 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 the tracking down stuff. I mean, we, we have access to your system. We can see a lot of files. But there may be stuff that we just need somebody on the ground to help do that. Again, get you through the crisis, get you caught up, help prepare internal financials. I've seen some of the historical uh, financial reports that have been given, um, and they are what they are. They're they're generated out of the system. Uh, we look at things differently. Uh, I mean, my, just so you know, we are a healthcare firm. Um, I've been auditing hospitals for about 25 years. My whole firm, we are healthcare. We don't do construction. We don't do banks. We are healthcare. So we've seen a lot of, we have a lot of ideas for board packets and what boards might be interested in, but really at the end of the day, the board needs to decide what they want to see on a finan- on a monthly state, on a monthly basis. What does the board want? And that's something that we would want to help the team build. That way you get everything caught up, you get everything reconciled, and then you just start churning it monthly. And that way your, your finance team is able to press a button and say, okay, we're ready for the board meeting. This is what the board wants. We know what they want. They want one schedule, they want 100, whatever it is. And that's really our goal is to help you get to that point. Because ultimately, you've got to have accurate and updated financials to make financial decisions for the for the facility. I mean, we have talked about the last few weeks about, uh, you know, getting additional, maybe a couple additional, uh, whether part-time or one full-time people in there to help. Uh, but then once we get everything lined out, uh, you can still be our fractional CFO. Uh, you are, you know. We, our firm can definitely do that. That, uh, yeah, we can definitely do that. But again, I, we, we want to help you get through this, and we want to help train whoever it is uh, on a daily level. And we've gone in and helped do cleanups, and we've actually, like I said, we've talked, we've worked ourselves out of a job, and we're perfectly content with that. Because at the end of the day, you need every hospital needs those people on site every day that know the numbers inside and out. And that's really what we want to help you get to. We can do fractional CFO work. We can come in after the books are closed and do that high level review. We do that for a couple of other facilities. We come in and see that. I call it the 30,000 foot level view of, okay, one, we want to make sure everything's reconciled, cash reconciled, those types of things. But then we look at your allowances for the month. You know, we have a lot of experience and look at contractuals and bad debts on a monthly basis and look at trends. We can help with that um, and give us, give you our thoughts on that kind of stuff. Um, but really help, and again, help get the board prepared or get the packs prepared for board. We can absolutely do that. But until before that can be done, there is a lot, a lot of work to be done. Like I said, we know we know 10 bank accounts have not been reconciled since that 6-30-23 month. And so there's a lot, a lot of work to do. Right. And I, and I talked to you about this, and I talked to our uh, auditors about this. Uh CFOs are not out there anymore. I mean, there's four CFO, hospital CFOs uh, uh, for this Wyoming. And if you look across the United States, they're just not out there. Uh, they may come for a year, then they're on the bigger and better thing. And it's just a, a battle trial to recruit a full-time CFO. 
it, it can be difficult. We have, I mean, we're, we're based out of Texas and we deal with a hundred hospitals and trust me, the, the great CFOs that you find, they never leave. The ones that are worth their weight in gold, those facilities take care of them. I mean, it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. Healthcare is such a special niche too. I mean, the lay accounting for healthcare for healthcare entities is just a different animal. And it's something that you've got to love. You've got to have a passion for at the end of the day, but yeah, it's difficult to find not saying they're not out there. You might find somebody that wants to live in Eastern Wyoming and that would be great. Um, but they're not running around. I promise you, they're not running around here in Texas either. A lot of them just free, you know, free, just willing to go everywhere. So it is a struggle. Any other questions? I think we need, I think the board needs to decide what they want in their board package from a financial standpoint, what financials they want in. We've got a lot of work to do before we get there. Yeah, and I don't know where to direct this question to. Is our financial department, is it a check and a double check system? Is it someone that receives the checks and someone that deposits the checks or yeah. is that all well, we have that but we still need it we we, we need a, about an additional one and a half ft but we need additional training uh for people like durbin and them uh to get our people where they need to be any other questions doing the audit that we're waiting for? DZA out of Washington State is what the board picked to do the 2023 audit. Great to work with. Do you have any other stuff? Anything else you want to tell us? No, no. I just wanted to give the board an update again. I, we were there in late January and, and we've kind of been working on this and we finally just said we've got to come up with what we have. We were wanting that audit wrapped up to be to make sure those beginning numbers for your fiscal year were updated. We finally just pulled the plug and said we've got to figure out what's going on, and that's why we sent our, our crew up there, our Patty up there, to look at it. So I wanted to give you an update. Again, we are here to help in any form or fashion, whatever that may be. Um, Randy's got my contact information, and any of you are more than welcome. Just call me if you want to just talk. I, I don't mind it. He's got my cell phone. I don't mind those discussions at all. And we're here to help and, and let us know what we can do to help help you get through this. You're going to be in the area in June, and you mentioned yesterday. <laughs> I, I, I'm actually taking a family trip. Up. We're going to spend a week in, and I'm taking my 11-year-old up to Mount Rushmore in that area. And it's the week of your board meeting, of all things. Um and so I haven't gotten permission from the wife yet, but I probably can make that happen. I would love to come meet you and just talk to you face to face. I'm in the area. Um, no charge. Obviously, I'm going to be there. So that's even the better part. Right. Um, but I would love to come and visit. And, and if there's a better day just to visit with a couple of you or whatever, like I said, I'm going to be there the whole week. It's kind of crazy how it worked out, but I don't mind sitting out and visiting or, or doing whatever I can. Thank you. All righty. Thank you all. Thanks, Tommy. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Provider contracts? Now, these are actually provider agreements on the mid levels, and uh, one uh, uh, medical doctor that I wrote will be presenting to the medical staff once they review, and then they'll have to come back to the board. So, what are you thinking about? Where, when, how, what? Mid levels. Uh, mid levels are three current ones we have uh, to be able to work the clinic. Uh, it's just an addendum to their contract. And Dr. Haverly uh, wants to come to work three days a week, so we'll take that before the medical staff. And then we'll work with three additional local companies for additional staffing. We so need. Any other any questions? I guess I do have a question. Do you and Dr. Haverly have some? Are you have you agreed to some terms? You're going to present it to the medical staff when? Uh, the medical staff is next week, and Dr. Haverly was supposed to be this week, but he couldn't make it, so he 
can come in next week to talk to HR and myself and Kim to review his contract. Okay. And do you think you have an agreement on a contract with him? I have an agreement for him to review, yes. Any other questions? Privacy coach? Yeah, so the privacy coach has to do with, uh, as you see in your pamphlet, uh, that was recommended by the previous board and our attorney uh, to work with Kim in compliance and quality to get her educated and invest in our own staff to move forward with compliance issues and uh, policy and uh, education and training for not only her but the board and the leadership team uh, you know the outline there and you don't have to act on this tonight I mean take it back and be good uh, discuss it bring it back at the next group. what's everybody thinking about that mm -hmm. I think we do it yeah, yeah. As long as it's, nobody wants to go this tonight, is that correct? By reading everybody right? Okay, so now um, we've got the packaging, packaging, packaging machine. Lots of information. <laughs> So, I know some of you know me, some of you don't. I'm Joy, I'm the inpatient pharmacy manager. So, we have a machine in our pharmacy. Anybody's welcome to come look at, at it. I'm happy to show it. It is a giant robot. What it does is it packages meds for our manor, our clinic, and our acute care site. So we have this machine, it's called a Talus, is the version we have, which is, is a brand name. And looking at our machine, we run about 5,200 doses through that machine right now currently. We're on end of life on the machine. We bought it and installed it nine years ago. It was used when we purchased it and installed it. I can't get exact dates on the machine. The company knows it's over 10 years old. 10 years is the lifespan on the machine. So we've been having more and more med airs out of the machine, um, dumping pills together, um, brushing pills, chopping pills, um, not packaging the right pills because things are can get loose in it and jam and drop the wrong medication in the wrong package. So we set up an Oasis team with a the manor. They get the bulk of our meds, which is about 4,800 doses a week we run through this machine. And we started looking at options, bringing things to the table, and what can we do? Because at some point, this machine is going to go down. I don't have a service contract on the machine. There, the machine is no, this version is no longer in production. It went out of production 10 years ago. And we are not sure we can get parts to repair it. To get a service person in here to assess it, if it goes catastrophically, something breaks in it. They're coming from Seattle, Washington. They don't know if they'll be able to get parts. It depends on what goes wrong with the machine. So we have to start looking at what other options do we have. So we sat down in a group and we looked at net airs and I'll go through starting on the first section. So on this large machine, there's currently only two companies that produce these machines worldwide, the size of the machine that we have. One is Swiss Law, which is a Talus machine, which is what we have upstairs. The other company is BD, which is a part of machine. Those machines are very, very similar in what they do, basically. Um, very comparable in doing large amounts of packaging, packaging individual doses, packaging what we call a run of medication, which is a program that's so it packages for seven days of five starting in the morning through the evening time, or it can package a 30-day supply in a roll. So what we looked at and what we ran through on our machines and coming out of this is several factors on 
on our machine. So I'm going to run through my notes. Um, the security of patient information. We send patient information from our billing system, which is QS1, through this machine. Um, what is compatible? Will it be compatible with our current software? QS1 is compatible with both companies. And there is a charge for an interface with Swiss Love. There's not a charge for an interface with Carta. Um, looking at our current software, we're running on 2007 software on the machine, which is a security risk. And when we um, bring in the new machine, we wouldn't have a security risk because we could upgrade everything independently and maintain firewall protection on that software would be correct. So as we go through this, um, the part of the machine, the one that we came as a group to look at as the best option for our facility is the BD320 bundle. Um, it's on the first page of the package that I presented, and I'm happy to email any of this out to you anyone who wants to look at data. It's quite a bit of data. So that machine, um, price for that machine, to purchase that machine is $467,000 to $267,000 and $68,000. That machine would have a 10-year lifespan and would come with several features that we currently don't have that would help with pharmacy staffing and safety for our medications. The Parna machine, and if you go to the first quote from Parna, and all the quotes I have in here, if you want additional quotes, you can get them. And it will be kind of hard to read, but I'll say DD Parna at the top, and then it'll be the three, ATP2 320 wide machine. So you have your primary machine, and that is like our packaging machine that will allow us the package mix, which currently if you set it to run, it runs through and package the mess that are in the machine and drops it out. The additional features that are in the newer machine that um, are on the same, let me make sure you have the right one, that we're adding. So the top price is the price for the actual machine. When we go down to um, the universal lighted tray, this allows us to package in our runs, half tablets, hazardous meds, um, unusual meds can go through there because the machine can see them and recognize them and we can program them to do that. Currently, those medications are coming to be either pre-packaged and dispensed in baggies or cassettes because we can't run them with the current machine because we would mix hazardous or not hazardous meds or our current package <coughs> won't recognize a half tablet or an unusual medication. So that universal light and tray would allow us to package unusual doses into the same format as other medications. A part of Pearl Pouch Inspector that's on there for 125600 that's included in the overall price, that's an additional machine that will help with the checking of the meds. And Melissa Nanner has gone through this process with us. But all doses currently being printed have to be checked. By, they're checked by a technician, and then they're checked by a pharmacist. And when the machine is having lots of problems or short staff, nursing has stepped up to help us check those individual doses. This would electronically check those doses when it goes through, and then snap photos of those meds and tell us in the program, tell the pharmacist if there's a problem with the meds, if there's a wrong med package or a crushed med or a duplicate med in there, the system would let us know if that's in there, where it's located in that. The pearl cut and roll would take the medications coming out of the machine. So if we're looking, and anyone's welcome to come in and see the process. Um, running for the man right now takes us five to six hours once we start our machine running, and somebody has to stay there with it to keep it running. And it all comes out of the big pile, and it's giant tape. And then we have to hand roll that for each individual patient. And that's taking our technician time about eight hours a week. I'd like to add in for Joy there too, just as she suggested that you guys go and check out the machine there. 
I'm offering for you guys to come over to the manor. I'll pull out a cart and you can see the whole way that they're packaged. The different rolls, because they run a seven day roll at a time. Um, the different packaging that it comes in, it comes in a box, it comes in a, um, some of them come in bottles, some of them come in baggies, some of them come in the little foil pouches that you have to um, break apart. So her stating that that extra component that will do the half tabs, it'll do like the commands, the hazardous materials, it'll all go into the same roll. So we won't have five different ways to fill a medication up and potential errors made there because errors have been made. And even myself going onto the cart the first time I did, they're color coded. I mean, it, it's nothing like I've passed medications before. I mean, I used to the, we call them the bingo cards and they got the little popper out. So you got 31 days worth there and that's the way they come. And, or it's just all one big candy strip. And unfortunately that machine does not have that capability. So if you want to come over and see one of our cards over the manor, just please give me a call and I will be happy to accommodate any time. I agree with Melissa, there's lots and lots of potential, uh, whether it's on the pharmacy side or medication side, to have an error because of all of the different ways we're packaging medications and putting them out there for one patient. The medication packaging, um, the new system has some great capabilities for us and a variety of ways to package individual doses for acute care. I can run a seven day supply of the machine. I can run a 30 day supply. So we've got some future opportunities if we have unusual patients for specific packaging for those patients within the system, within our current EMR that we're running. When we're looking at time wise, um, when we run the packages meds, so the whole printing process takes about six hours, start to finish, can't leave the machine. Uh, technician takes at least one to two days to hand roll these medications and put them into the packet, the boats that we will send over to the manor. And then it takes six to eight hours for a pharmacist to go through and check those. And Melissa, your staff is sending about four hours on those checks. It's about four hour check, and that's an extra person who are staffing in addition to who we have on the floor. So they are just in a room somewhere checking the medications just to make sure that the correct pill is in there. And it's the correct role in the correct role. Looking at um, some of the maintenance on these machines and why we chose CARTA over points to a smaller is um, CARTA. It's 90 days to bring in the machine on site to start integrating it and bring it into our system. The support team, if something goes wrong with the machine, is coming from. Is, so if something happens, um, IT wise is a buzz or mechanical, we can have support staff here from Denver to work on the machine. It is a part of the machine. There's several part of machines going in in Wyoming for the VA. The VA has signed a contract with part of their packaging, and they're currently running them in China. The Swiss Log Talus machine, uh, six to nine months from the time we order until the machine is built and coming our way. If we need any support on our on the TELUS machine, the technician has to come from Seattle, Washington. So we do want to have to fly in to work on the machine. Um, in the industry and asking other pharmacy directors and looking at machines, Swiss Log is looking at possibly no longer operating the TELUS. When we went out and asked for bids, they have one machine and one option in that process. Carta has several, we quoted several of their options. Um, the 320 machine, we can put 320 medications into that machine in canisters, and we can change those canisters to fit meds to help with that process of filling. If we need to expand that machine, we always have to expand that machine up to a 400. The 320 would match as close as possible full to the machine we're currently running. Well, I know it's a lot of information. There's a lot of quotes in there. Um, Carter quoted both purchase prices of all three machines and the leasing. Um, Swiss Love quoted a purchase price for a Talus, and they can quote a lease option if we want. And those are the machines, the options that we're able to get on the market 
we did look at bubble packing, um, the bubble packs that Melissa was talking about. Bubble packing, we do it by hand. So we would have to increase our pharmacy staff and our pharmacy space to be able to bubble pack doses. And it would go to a 30 to 31 day supply. And that medication would have to be individually packed to check those bubble packs. I would have to add probably at least three to four staff members for the volume of meds and the changes we're doing just the bubble pack meds, as well as it would add to a higher amount of meds we have to dispose of or donate to the cost of patients. Currently, with our plus one system, so um, it's now filling patients every seven. Patients are filled in a seven day supply. Insurance is paying for seven day supply, so if they stop a med, we're not dispensing extra medications to those patients that they don't need, and then they don't have to worry about safe disposal and, and the patient be charged for meds. For them. <coughs> Yeah. Right. Right. Ready? Yeah. Questions? I'll just comment like equality with when Gotti and Jamie and I in the last few months of February saw a, a pretty heavy increase in med errors due to this machine. So it is, I mean, I have documentation here, but I'm just vouching for that too. It's, I, I've seen a number of med errors due to the machine, either spitting out more than needed, or like you said, the last one I saw crushed pills. So it has been a need for a while, for whatever that's worth. Joy, you had a couple of prices in here, uh, outright purchase costs, and then you had stuff from, I can't even say it, a bank. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> um, the bank one is leasing. Okay. Is there... So is the leasing like zero percent financing, or is there a finance cost in the lease? Because the finance cost. Do you know what the percentage <coughs> is? I don't know the specific percentage rate. I can calculate that and get back to you on it. So include the reason why I'll cost the machine, which I believe is higher. And the reason why I was asking is because our local bank had to ask us on a purchase of another piece of equipment to try and match rates. So I was, I would love to, if we can, give our local, if we are going to finance it, and if we can, if we, to give our local banks a chance to <laughs> match or do better. Then I can get Appreciate that. Have any other questions? So, so I have a question just for the board. Is Nick, are you the only one that's been there and seen this? I haven't seen it yet. I just was reading the reports and actions. We were just piling up over the last months. And Carrie, you were there for the last week where you know they presented that to us as well. And it's been an issue. So, this thing is at its end of life. So, um, I know it's there's a, sticker. It's an Yes. quality of care issue that we really do need to correct. And what Melissa was alluding to is also that the time and energy just to babysit it as well. So um, so do we have a um, <laughs> what do we want to do? Yeah, I tell you what I yeah, absolutely. So based on what Jennifer said, we have about six point eight million in cash from what she said, four point seven million is money market, which is not a time deposit, it's a deposit access that cash. Um, not sure about this. So what Joy said is it'll cost us about forty seven thousand dollars a year to use the machine that will do the work of three to four people. If you assume fifteen dollars per hour wage plus all the benefits and taxes and stuff, I just suggest twenty five dollars an hour. The people cost will be one hundred and fifty thousand a year. So, machine from a financial standpoint, it's 
earth, right? So the people plus the better whole. <laughs> Nobody can hear me. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that again. This is better. All right. So um, Jennifer said we have 6.8 million in cash. Um, if we finance it, we pay 79,000 in interest over the six years. I, I can't figure out that rate <coughs> I have right now, but just so you know, um, you know, eighty thousand dollars. I don't know what we're earning in our money market. But we have to compare those rates. Maybe a slight rate. If the Fed drops rates, then it would be a bigger difference. I'd also want to know if there's any early payment <coughs> or any reason we couldn't pay it off. So the machine is four hundred sixty-seven thousand, inclusive of all the maintenance and packages and things. And so she says it has a ten-year life. So then the cost is about forty-seven thousand per year. If we hired three to four people, I just said three, it would be about 150,000 a year total if they work 2,000 hours. That doesn't include construction costs, which is always something. So the machine gives better quality, and it's basically a third of the price of having people do it. I think that's all good arguments. My only question is. We just don't know the whole financial situation. If we commit to four hundred and sixty-seven thousand, yeah, I, I agree. Without yeah. knowing a little bit better about our whole yeah. financial picture, so what's the big amount? Right, right. We do need to know. Um, I'd like to visit with Jennifer and just make sure it's all there and log in and everything. Um, what's the backup plan right now? We just got this. What What did people do? Daniel. <laughs> so the backup emergency plan, um, we're talking yep, about talk about it <laughs> So in the backup emergency plan we're talking about in the pharmacy, we have these plastic cassettes we have to put meds into and click lids on them. And we would have to get extra help because we're only running about a week ahead because we're building at that week to get payments, Medicare, Medicaid, insurance. They don't want us to build Head on that seven days, so we're pretty close to just a week ahead. So we would need uh, staff, extra staff to come in and help us package in those cassettes so that we could get the meds out. Um, we could always call Swiss Log and have them send a technician. A technician would be coming from Seattle and they could troubleshoot the machine. We may or may not be able to get it back up. Yeah. There is a small tabletop packager you can get for hospitals that run don't run the volume that we're running for these packaging machines. And we're currently waiting on a quote for what it would cost to bring one of those machines in to temporarily help. We're, we're looking at a six, if it goes down and we can't get it back up, I'm looking at and expecting a six month window to get the new machine, get a program interfaced and running. So are they cassettes reusable? They are reusable. It's and labor intensive. They will allow up to eight tablets to be put in them, and they're color coded by time. And we put them in the post to go out to the manner. So, is is there flex staff anywhere available in the hospital? Could be more than And believe before I was here, and before we had the packager, that nursing. Help them fill the cassettes when they were in a bind. The nurses came in and helped. So, oh, all together. so it would be manual manual yeah. labor. Yeah. It would be nursing, yeah. and we just wouldn't want to have anybody you know going in there. Maybe could use a med aid, but that's taking our nurses off the floor. And I'm running at my max staff right now that I have on the floor. So it would it would be taking our resources off the floor to take care of the patients than to then fill the medication folks. And with the other option when we're looking at these quotes from PARTA, um, and I know we're looking at budgets, we're looking at finances, we could bring in the packager and then look at bringing in the additional pieces that roll later with the um, pieces that check electronically. Those can come in separately. So like the lighted tray and the, the, the lighted tray has to be built in, but okay. the additional rollers and okay. the checking 
they can bring it separately and later. Would there be any way in an emergency to help source some other pharmacy that had a connection to the I can check, but I don't think there's another pharmacy without transferring our patients and all of the billing to another pharmacy. There's the Drug Securities and Exchange Act that requires that you dispense from the pharmacy that is going through the insurance. Otherwise, you have to keep the paperwork on every single tablet for eight years, all the way back to the manufacturer. Would there be a situation that uh, they would grant one for two months to buy have that purchase? I don't know. We can always ask. These machines are pretty heavy. Um, Wendy and I tried to move the machine the other day, and we had no luck. <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to add to, as she mentioned a little bit, the, the current packager is working on Windows 7, which hasn't been supported for multiple years. So we have an access point for someone who would like to get in, who could get into our facility. Windows 7 hasn't been patched in at least three years. So we have security risks involved as well. And I know that's not as much med, med air, but we're talking about a security risk as well. For each day we continue to use the packager. We have already had to purchase an additional battery backup for the packager, which was $2,700. So we're already putting money into the packager just to keep it going on the daily as well. So I keep that in mind. Where I was going was hopefully in June, we've got some kind of financial report. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, it might help make it a better decision. If we're to see. What, what was the lead time? If if we said yes, hypothetically today. I mean, base case, best case scenario part of JD is they build these machines and they order them that they can have one here in 90 days. This log, it'll be at least six months from the time you start the build before they put the machine on the market. So the, if we financed it, it would cost, according to this sheet, about 9000 per month. I think if we could find out if we could finance it for a couple months and then pay it off with no penalties. I, I would I would want to know. Yeah, yeah that would be the have you been in contact? I'm not even gonna try to pronounce your name. Yeah. Uh, is that who the manufacturer has a relationship with? That's who the manufacturer has a relationship with. Um, I can definitely work with anybody on the board to get contact and look at other posts locally. So if, if you could reach out to me, I have, to okay. I have a list of questions for you. Okay. I'd like to know is the rate fixed for clothing? And then is there any really that no, I would not be so you get clothing. I'd just like to know those details. Yeah, we definitely need to go down. So is there a, is was this in your capital budget for this year? Yes, it was, it was in the capital budget. Yeah. yeah, for about this amount. Yes, it was in the capital budget. And, and it was for around this. So if we if we don't act on this, my thoughts. If we don't act on this today, it looks it sounds like this is not a new efficiency. It's serious. Even if we, how many nurses would we have to stop admitting patients in a manner if you had to stick some of your nurses in the pharmacy for three months? Well, currently, um, we do have a potential of two more admissions coming in, but we also are kind of in a standstill. We're back up to what we were last year, but we also have that HVAC that's kind of looming over our heads. That so we have to keep. Our unit six, which is eight beds, four rooms, open. So when we transfer our secure unit, we can transfer that whole unit over there to that unit. Um, the rest of my rooms are really filling up right now as it is. So potential of about two more people coming in would probably put me at about my max of the general population. Um, Nurse-wise, uh, I don't think it would have, you know, if we had to use some of the nurses, there might be some clinic nurses that might be able to come in and help fill in too. I don't know what their hours are over there. But um, really for our nurses right now, it would be their willingness to be able to go above and beyond their actual scheduled hours. I would just like to say one thing. I think that um, nursing has enough on their plate yeah. without having to go into the pharmacy and count pills. Mm -hmm. This looks so to me like, kind of like, like, like a mini 
I just feel that that's that's not and it goes. So if there. if we're not going to tell everybody in the manner to go home or go somewhere else, <laughs> then this looks like a mission disaster. Been just waiting to happen. It's probably been kicked out. So, so I just think um, I I would not want to say yes to these terms unless I knew the rate was fixed. Yeah. How how can we do this? I don't. My input is this should not wait another month. So, what's the mechanism for following up? My suggestion would be that we make a motion to purchase this machine and let finance committee work on the best terms for either. Will they let us? The best terms for that <laughs> Yeah, they'll have right now when they are not it. gonna start building it unless well I would problems. I would like the opportunity for us to discuss with our local bank to see if we can get better terms uh, in terms of financing. Right. So, so it, if we, the board approved purchasing the machine and working out the best finance terms that we could find, whether that be local or with the manufacturer. I, I, I think that would be sure, sure. a big motion. Uh, I guess my question is on the, the mechanism. So if, if we, I don't want to say yes to this, that one. I also don't think it should be another month since this machine is kind of based away. And we would not want to put our nurses in. For, for 90 days, 20 days. Well, is, Randy, what's your suggestion? I mean, well, I, I think we get the best pricing from the company, whether it's lease or purchase, not running, uh, see what their interest rate is, go to the local banks like we did on the radiology uh, renovation, uh, and go back to the at the lowest rate and the lease option. Mm -hmm. but, 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 I do have. Uh, no, I do have one link request in our uh, public office for training slide deck. There was one slide I wish that we had to turn it down. I would like to have the reference. It, I think it said that we have a limitation on what we can borrow. It's, as I understood it, it's one times payment to limit. So, that I, yeah. I, I do remember the slide. I yeah. tend to pick up on those. Yeah. So that would be a question for the Love and All office. Yeah, can we ask Allison? Allison, on. Allison, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So the limitation on borrowing is not beyond the uh, the cash of the uh, assets of the organization. So basically, you would look at your budget, and you can't budget to spend more than your total uh, revenue. Does that make sense? Um, can I ask a question? Um, yeah, so it, and I'm not an accountant, so if I'm not using correct accounting terms, forgive me. Um, so I'm just referencing, remember the slide deck, and I remember distinctly it said we had a borrowing limit that was one times, I took it to mean the mill levy. Um, no, you're heard, not limited to the mill levy. Okay, I, but I heard you say we could spend one time the cash, or is it one time on revenue? Those are two different yeah, you you cannot you cannot sign up to spend more money than you are um, budgeted to receive. Well, but, but the only money that we receive is the mill. Yeah. No. It's our revenue. It's the one times the revenue that we're budgeted to receive. Okay. All right. So. I don't know how much debt we have because we don't have a balance sheet available. Um, but but you you can you can borrow against your existing cash. The idea is that you the idea is you cannot sign up to spend more than you either have or going or are going to have. Right, and at this point, I don't know how much debt we have. I hope we don't have more debt. Than we have. Yeah, so sorry, that's not my area. <laughs> we, we shouldn't have a problem here. Thank you. For, 
Yeah. It sounds like we have long-term debt of one point nine million. So if we net that against our cash, Jennifer was yep. We're ahead of that about five million. So this uh, would take up about ten percent of our borrowing capacity. But I think we've already agreed to borrow against the CT and X ray uh, project. So oh. oh, Nathan, you're you're confusing the numbers. We have no if if Randy's right and we have one point nine million in long term debt. Yes, we are if when you're looking at the the numbers you're talking about, you're talking about monthly income. If when you're looking at the the numbers you're talking about, you're talking about monthly income. Like you have to look at your long-term debt versus your yearly income, which is $26 million. So if we have a yearly income of $26 million and debt of $1.9 million, our ratio is really low. Right, right. So yeah. we're right. plenty within yeah, I think we're, 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 Am I right? right? This should be We should have plenty of room. I, I could touch base with Allison, but we're for sure have $5 million in cash debt at this point. Right. So whether it's the five million that's the limit or a bigger number, uh, we would only be using ten percent of our capacity. So I don't think this. I think this is a pretty easy choice as long as we're aware of the terms of the debt and if we can repay early. I and my concern is: is there any mechanism where we can, if we wanted to, is contingent upon getting the answers? And we can is, is it my understanding this machine was forty in the budget? Yes. And is so, that correct? And the cap budget. So was the machine already approved when the budget was retired? I you wouldn't have to come back and approve those big purchases like okay. that. I I believe for people that know better correctly, I put this is what I <laughs> see the solution as. Is we go ahead and vote to approve it contingent on not to exceed as we did with the actual project. We worked with the uh, finance committee, the board approved it not to exceed this amount and not to go above this interest rate. I, so I would sort of uh, that's not exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say we vote to approve it. And give the uh, finance <coughs> and together with Randy, but I want that done. To I would suggest that we recommend that they do that together. Decide on the what's terms, the best way the to best terms. terms. Yeah. Right. That could look but, so we will need a motion for that. Allison, is that work lock? Legal wise, can you repeat what you said? Sorry, that, that we go ahead and vote to approve this purchase, but that Randy and the finance committee work together to get the best terms as as far as interest rate and payback terms. Yeah, that's fine. You you would authorize the total uh, expenditure not to include the interest. Or may, what I would suggest is maybe an interest rate not to exceed is probably a good way to frame the motion. Okay, so somebody will need to make that motion. Question real quick. So this would be worked out until the next financial meeting then? No, you guys, they do it. I think they should have you would probably do it for a okay. sooner finance committee meeting as well. <coughs> We just checked the <laughs> meeting on the last thing. We got 120 days to go there. So I make a motion that we purchase the part of 320 bundle. That's your recommendation, Joy. The part of 320. 
Part of 320. Okay. So I make a motion that we purchase the part of 320 uh, for a cost not to exceed $467,287.68 uh, terms to be worked out by the finance committee to determine the best um, course of action for finance. That was a question. <coughs> for discussion? Yes. Uh, I, I'm a little bit confused. You're not wanting to buy it out, right, then? So when I said the motion was for terms to be determined uh, by the finance committee, so the finance committee will look at the lease rates, the proposed by the manufacturer, and the purchase outright versus the purchase bank. outright and borrowing from a local bank. Yep. So we'll determine what or the best course of action is. Their bank. Yep. Okay. So is that fair? You're leaving it up to the finance committee to decide whether you're basically buying it out <laughs> and borrowing the money or leasing. Yeah. Perfect. With Randy? With Randy. With the CEO. Yes, the CEO. finance committee and the CEO. Yeah. CEO. Jointly determined. Is that? As I understand. Are you comfortable with that? Test? This, I, I am. I'm just trying to get it up from yeah, yeah. where the side yeah. Is. Yeah. Yeah. As I understand this agreement, I don't think we see this. This is a purchase. This is a purchase, right? That price is for purchase. The other quote is for finance. And so, since they can tell us the total finance amount, it's strongly suggested we fix it. And so, it's just really the finance committee who just figure out what's that fixed rate. If we want to pay it off early, can we? But otherwise, I, as I understand the motion, you can be approving it. Well, it's it's obvious a 60 month agreement for $9,009. It takes 6,060 times nine and come up with a total purchase price. You might be able to work with our GPO to get the price for the city. Sure, we go to school. I know with other hospitals, the only thing, other thing that other hospitals closing, is there any new used equipment available? There are. You take the risk of uh, the problem. But yeah. I mean, there's, there's 22 hospitals that are closed. Do you find somebody else who's using the sign? It might be able to be a fucking amount of dollars. Try to put a thousand dollars in. But you gotta have to check the warranty. You have to go and spit it in our space. We have one in the space. We have the. Plus, this is capital, so you put it on top. Do you have any more discussion? I just think if I use equipment, medical equipment, you're taking a risk. Yeah, especially this. It's not like a hill rock bed. Yeah. You can imagine a lawsuit if you made a mistake and everybody makes mistakes. Dr. Reimer, are you just are you listening, or do you have something you want to tell us? Oh, I'm I'm just listening. Okay. I, I would give you a couple of thoughts. One is, you know, it sounds like most of this is manner. I don't know how that comes into cost reports. Half of your patients are private pay to raise your rates and save to cover you know part of this. Um, and financing, you know, you only get to write off the Medicare portion of your patient population. I think so it's only going to be about sixty percent. Uh, I think of that interest you write off, Randy. Is that right or wrong? What's that? Say if, if you have 40% private patients and 60% Medicare, if you want to write off that interest on the cost report, you can only write off 60%. I'm right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's just factors. <laughs> and I was trying to hear. <laughs> the, the, the main mechanism I'm concerned with 
is I think it's a fixed rate. Right now, we're I think Jennifer said we're earning five percent or so money market, which is good, and probably is a couple percentage rates, percent lower than this. So as long as we can earn five percent, then we're really probably paying two percent interest, which is next to nothing. So I'm very happy to do that. I think everybody expects at some point in the near future the Fed's going to push rates down on our money market, and when we're back to earning one percent in our money market, if we're paying six or seven a year, and if we have a couple of good months where we increase our bank account, then it would make a lot of sense to say, you know what, let's pay that off and save the seventy-five thousand. And I just want to make sure we're not trapping ourselves into a loan agreement that won't let us. So that's really so are we ready to vote? Yeah. So everybody in favor of purchasing uh, a my motion is to purchase the Parta 320 bundle for a cost not to exceed $467,287.68 with finance terms to be worked out by the finance committee and the CEO. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. That motion is passed. <laughs> okay, so we got the packaging machine to take care of. Um, bylaws. Carrie, was that you? Today? Yeah, so I asked that this be added to the agenda just because uh, we've talked in small groups um, and I just wanted to be talked about by all of us. Um, I think it's the consensus that our bylaws needs work um, and that there are some changes that a lot of us are looking to make. So I ask that it be added to the agenda just so that um, all of us, and maybe the chair can issue a directive for all of us to take a look at the bylaws and bring forward for discussion uh, any suggested changes at the next meeting. What I would personally like is that um, we work together as a board to make all these changes to our bylaws, but we do it slowly and deliberately with a lot of discussion between all of us and a lot of input from Allison as our legal counsel. Um, that's just my request to the board that we, we do it slowly, deliberately, together, and correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. And I talked to Wendy about it when she gave me the laptop. Um, so we have a SharePoint server. And she said she can convert bylaws from PDF to Word. So my plan is to ask her to do that. And once I have it in Word, I'm going to turn on track changes. And that's just the most easy to understand format. And so my plan for next meeting, if I can get, get that, is I'll be prepared my computer or somebody's computer up and just and we can just kind of start and then we can talk to people and have sort of a collaborative session and then we can see the changes as we go and it will be very clear what changes we're making and not and then it'll be very easy for Allison to do that. And so we can I can kind of have some proposed changes and then just do that together. To create a working document that we all can see. Yeah, and, yeah, and then yeah, it will show us all the changes. Yeah. And once we go through it, and we've all looked at it, uh, put in our input, and then we can send that to Allison yeah. for review. So my, so my question on that is, how much time do we want to dedicate to that at a meeting? Like, I think that's the way to do it, is either set a 15-minute time or a 30-minute time, and we'll just keep working through it until we've got it done in each meeting. I would agree because I would hate to get hit with nine changes all in one night. Right. right. That's I so, think so right how many changes would we want to three total changes? Two. So just start at the beginning of the bylaws and work through the first um, and they kind of notify each other. 
the controller can make a change to that, but we know it's back to the Yeah, so I mean, you can see in those documents what people are doing just to get more clarification and more communication. I was there today. I want you guys to see kind of what I was working on. Okay. My, my thought on that is it may get unmanageable if we have a shared document. So I was thinking about just making one document that nobody changes unless we're all together. Okay, I see. And so and it's just one single document. Nobody changes it unless we're all looking at it. Okay. And, and we kind of go, and I didn't have the proposed changes. Would that be like in a, a board training session you do that in, or what kind of capacity do we do that? Or we need to do that. And that's the question. Okay. Um, might I add, I, I drafted the bylaws. I've edited them over the years that I've been serving, and I have it in Word because I'm the one who edited it. So I'm happy to do that. Um, happy to follow your lead on how you want to handle it. My suggestion from having done a lot of group editing is to create a list of bullets and then uh, give the concept to me and then I can draft it. I think that I've had good luck with that. So the other suggestion I would have is you could do it, as you said, throughout several board meetings, or you could have a workshop that the purpose of it is to work on the bylaws. Uh, I had one more comment, if I could. Um, as to your question on the financing, I found the statute. It's uh, Wyoming Statute 1612-407, and there's a limitation on appropriations. Um, so you cannot make an appropriation in your budget of any fund in excess of the estimated expendable revenue and reserve uh, for the budget year. So that's more eloquent than how I put it, but hopefully that gives you guidance. Thank you, Allison. Yep. And yeah, another thing I wanted to mention to the board too for the newer members is that um, Allison, <coughs> keep Allison in the loop too on what we're trying to do because I know Allison is a lot like me and I, I don't like to be blindsided by things. I like to know and be prepared for things in advance and I know Allison does too. So if there's, you know, bylaws changes that we're thinking about and stuff, if we give Allison a heads up, that's, I, Allison, can I speak for you when I say that's helpful to you? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I went to get a glass of water. Absolutely. Thank you. So question is, do we want to just, what would you guys rather, would you, together do it is spending a day working on it or would you spend prefer spending some time working on it in the meetings but what i was proposing is i'll just go ahead and address the common issues that we've done and just as a proposed change so we don't have to do that and then you then we all can just react to the proposed change and it will be probably less if we just have Allison, your proposed changes rather than her having to read through it, I understand. And so, if some of the rest of us want to also suggest a change that maybe isn't yours, you yeah. want us to like bring that to you and you yeah. work on it. Yeah. And my, my proposal is just start at the very beginning of the bylaws, Article One, and just work through it from the top to the bottom. Yeah. So right. But I mean, you might have an idea for one, and someone else has an idea for the next one. Yeah, so, yeah, and we can I just, mean, just think of, as we go. Yeah. Okay. And we'll just take it paragraph by paragraph. I understand the document pretty well, and how it all works. We can just try and see how it goes. Okay. Um, so, I think it would be nice, and maybe I'm still not understanding the. Um, Nice to have a motion for what uh, for maybe that we do Article One and Article Two for the next meeting. Uh, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of that's, that's too much. A lot of okay. Yeah. So so somebody somebody keep talking. Somebody have a better idea. <laughs> okay. uh, my motion would be I'll propose a document. Um, Let's do our changes as we starting at the top of the document or detail, and then we can all react to it and see if we can reach a, a 
So would that be the whole document? Well, it would just, I would just, so Ted, you might have lower your final. No, so I'm just, just going to start the year, don't mind the yellow. And I'm just going to work down at wherever I think we should have our first two potential changes. I'll just add it and track changes. And it'll be on the screen and we can all see it. And then we can all discuss it. So we'll, you basically, we will do this all yeah. at, yeah, in at our meeting. During the board. I'm going to say this does not take a motion. This is just, uh, you know, where we're going to have a motion is in the changes. We're not changing this. They accept the two changes. I guess we're just wanting to add it to the agenda. Yeah. Okay. So it was a long discussion for adding to the agenda, but it's a good discussion. I'm not complaining. Okay. Um, anything else on bylaws? It seemed like there was two things we wanted to talk about. Did we get everything? The other thing that I wanted to chat about was uh, the last two meetings started at 5, and our bylaw specifically stayed starting at 5.30. So um, in the spirit that we've all been doing of, of trying to follow our bylaws, I would suggest that we return the meeting to 5.30 as specified in our bylaws. And you know, if you wanted to meet earlier as a work group, we can do that, but the actual meeting should start at 5 30. That's what our bylaws say. I was more training in general, right? Yeah. yeah, and we can yeah. do that, that's fine, but I'm I was just bringing it up as a and I will agree as a person who is late to the last meeting. No, <laughs> no, it started to I think this gives the public also more opportunity to, yeah. to be available to come to the meeting yeah. if, if they so choose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Okay, um, on to advertising. Um, I wanted to, I asked this to be added um, because of the uh, thing that was brought up by Bob Bonner in the last meeting about the cancellation of the contract for advertising with the newsletter journal. And I would, do you have any update on that, or is that something that we can? I discuss? sent an email to Mary and told her that she would be. She said she would be here in July, and I entertained that I would be more than happy. Oh, okay. So, I guess I don't understand. Um, it's very strong. She's one of she's the one the newsletter journal uh, oh. editors, I think. Or, so uh, is the contract with reporting. the newsletter journal still available? <laughs> I think the I think the question is about why we ended it prematurely. Well, yes, and I I guess I bring it up to have the board reaction to that because I think that we are a I think that we are a public entity, and it was said by Brandy that um, part of the reason for canceling it is because people don't read newspapers anymore, but I think in this community, I think newspaper advertising is still important, and people still do it, read it, and I am of the opinion that the more... Um, information that we can get out to the public and in light of this current situation where we seem to have a communication deficit it wouldn't i just feel like it wouldn't behoove us to cut back on our communications with the public um i would actually like to see a lot more communication with the public about things that are going on in the hospital um i for ann and i i I joke that we might be the only two people in Weston County who aren't on Facebook, but we're not on Facebook. <laughs> so when, if we don't well, see either. the newspaper yeah. and we don't get, like, it's important to still have old school advertising here. And I realized what, what our consultant said about social media and stuff, but I, I just would like the board's input to see if I'm the only person that feels that way. But I, I think it's important for this community to have. I think it leverage that expanse so I mean, between the social media part and uh, uh, Bob. 
I don't disagree that it needs to be different, but I think that we just need to do as much as we can as an organization to keep the public informed. And I think newspaper here is still part of that. Well, so Denise is trying to say something. Yeah. So one, I didn't realize we were under contract for I didn't a either. year. I didn't say there it. I have not seen a contract. We don't have any contracts, but it might have been a verbal one with Judd. If I had known that and Bob didn't say that in any of the emails previously, then I would have honored the contract. And I do think it's very important to put it in the newsprint too. So I've been putting some ads in there and I try to advertise in both county newspapers. But I would love any inputs you guys would like to say in any direction that you have. I just, I ask that it be added because I think that I just wanted to hear the whole board's <laughs> input on it, not just. Yeah, I've never seen a contractor. Okay, I think so, it was the okay, so we're just going to go down the road because everybody has a comment. Okay. So Nathan, you start, yeah. then we'll go to Ted. So, so for memory, um, I think it was Bob that brought the issue to light that um, on an annual basis, we're paying each and each consultant $40,000 a year for something the newsletter journal has been in five days. Since we just approved the new very expensive Machine. Um, I would just ask everybody to think is Ancient H doing something eight times better than what the newsletter journal was doing? I doubt it. Maybe it's some better, but I doubt it eight times. And so I think we should honor our commitments. And uh, I think it would be a good way to save $35,000 to put towards the new machine. Okay, so that. I think you make good. I think also H and H made good points that maybe what they were, were well, doing they, was they not. They was never, they were never going to be a full time. No. it was more of a training process with Denise, uh, so that she could afford. I don't know, think that that was a one time fee, correct? That forty you're talking about that was a one time fee, right, Randy? Right? Yeah, that's maybe the uh, working with newsletter journal. That's what. What we like to do, I, no problem with that is that uh, I think, as I remember, H and H suggested that maybe the upgrading was timely. Uh, based, I don't know what they were advertising on the newsletter. That you know that we need to work with somebody so that they are working with us. The only clarification I have is I said newsletter journal, but I think the Western County Gazette is. I will agree with too, you. So I think that's, I, I, they're part of the county. Yeah, yeah. I say newsletter. Oh, I don't think we So, okay, Kareem. Is that, that's a great yeah, I actually think that we should be uh, definitely using both the newsletter journal and the Western West County Gazette in Upton as well. You know, out of both covering the whole county. I think newspaper is a very important part of it as well. Definitely should be honoring that contract. And, and yeah. stay one, stay with it. I agree, but I would like a good working relationship with both speakers. Right. Yes. I'd like to be able to meet with them and have a good working relationship instead of an adversary. An adversary one, yep. because it is no one really good for that. And it doesn't do the county either. It doesn't do the county either. Right. No. I, but both papers need to be involved together. No, they're not going to have to work together. No, what we want to see advertised is going to benefit the organization, but benefit the patients uh, that we are serving. What did you want? Well, Ted, you had your hand up. I just wanted to correct myself. I believe I said contract. Uh, I heard contract several times. We don't have a contract. Bob said contract. And you no, haven't seen any paperwork or anything on yeah, that? I, I, I believe I remember seeing something in the press. That Bob mentioned it was an agreement. Judd Dawson did that's, that's right. Right. Yeah. I kind of remember. I think the issue is that I don't think it, it's an image we want to not live up to our promise. I agree, but I, you know, I, I did make yeah. a contract. So, so, so the, the motion I'd like to make is let's resume. I mean, that was a $5,000. Um, that's not our motion to make, is it? Right. 
So that's not something that we're going to vote on anyway. I mean, that's you know that's ultimately the CEO's decision. So um, we're just talking about getting advice on what we all believe in, which is our relationship be with the, the media, more so than us voting on something. That's, that's right. not our. Opinion. Um, but I, I like I said, I, I mentioned to Bob at that meeting. I said, why can't we? I'd like to move forward with you. You don't have to put any anything glowing about us. That's not what we're asking. I think what we're all we're asking is that you know there's communication back and forth. If you have clarification, clarifying questions, ask us. And that's all I was alluding to when I when I mentioned it's a lot of board meeting and, and and so on and so forth. But I like I said, I think the Gazette's a big piece of this too. I'm always going to argue for that because you know, up in, um, and they do report um, on it as well. Um, so, so I would say, like, how do we balance that? And I do like what H and H did. I mean, you, you you noticed when they came in the me social media and, and like what they mentioned that social media is a big part of where where people's eyes are today. Um, and I don't know what the newsletter journey was was doing. I don't know how much. What were we paying? What was? What were we getting out of five K? What were we getting? Three thousand. So, so it's hundred dollars a week. Okay. And they do email newsletters. Okay. Add online. I'm not real sure everything. I I do have an email from Bob that I can go back and and look at it. Yeah. Um, what did that all entail? Because that's what you're alluding to, right, Carrie? So there is an there is an ad almost every single week for. Um, it's mostly staffing stuff. Okay. But right. Denise does a lot of different ads about services uh, <coughs> week and right. stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that's important. I think stuff like. You know, we now do carotid ultrasounds and whatever we do. So you know, what, I think it's important you, for people to know about things right. like that. I just wanted to know. So what I think they we can make it better. I just wanted to know what they what they were actually producing. Yeah. So they were doing some ads, and yeah. she went on, and she could she could have them go on at a certain time. And there's things that I could do. It's just that I'm a little spread thin sometimes, I get it. and so I just. You know, but there are a lot of different avenues out there that I would love to talk with you guys about different things that we could do to help get information out to the public, including um, email newsletters, some things that there's there's quite a few different ideas out there. And I would really like to do a lot more online. Things. I'm not opposed to that. Open that back up. I just I just like I said, I didn't, I didn't I'm just asking what were we getting at that. I'm not saying we weren't getting anything. I don't know. So, that's a look. Well, I, I think the point I would just try to make is I think Bob's core objection was one of fairness. That right. Judd, our former CEO, had made an agreement with them yeah. to, to do the full 12 months at $100 a week. Right. And I think his core objection is just one of fairness and pride. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and just finish that out like we said we would, and then we can reconsider it. Yes, that expires. Expires. But he never, I Bob, I emailed Bob back and forth, and he did not tell me that there was, that there was a time, well, I guess there was a contract until he put it in his print, in his. First off, a lot of contracts have been hit. We, it took Denise and I two months to uncover all the property insurances. Yeah, no, I'm all for it. I mean, supporting, okay. supporting all so, media, so that, I, that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I just. I'm just trying to get more information. So since we've been off of it for a couple months, or for a couple week, month or so, are you guys okay if he wants another year to start over? I would are you like, guys with that? like to look at both papers, see what it is. So they do some online things with the Gazette. So this is just online, $100 a week. Okay. So we do additional ads in print with both newspapers. And there is a difference in cost between the both of the newspapers as well. <laughs> and we also, by we're on the subject of marketing, we also do have weekly um, ads in the radio. And we do advertise with all of that. And there is a radio station in Upton that we advertise with. So, and then we, we need to go to the foundation. Here. Well, I was okay. going to ask Nick. Yeah. You said something. This wasn't our decision. It was that. That's right. Okay. So we're just giving direction to look both ways. Or one yeah, way. just advice okay. or like. Right. We, Thank you. Know, you. I, I appreciate any direction that you guys have. This is your choice. For that price, anything over ten grand, it's obviously going to be our decision. Yeah. So are you good, Randy? You've got the. 
Yeah. Are we good to go? Um, work communication. Yeah, this, this is my last one, then you won't hear from me again. <laughs> um, I, this is sort of along the lines of the advertising, um, but I'm just, I'm just hoping that Randy and Denise, you could let the board know via emails or any other, probably email would be best, uh, things that are going on around the hospital. Like you had let us know about the barbecue and then when we came in, we saw that you had had, um, you had had all kinds of fun stuff for the whole entire week, like ice cream socials and stuff that I just thought we as board members, if you knew about it, then we could have had the chance to pop in and, and celebrate with the staff. And so I was under the so impression that you guys were in the facility emails when I sent them out facility wide. So I will double check and make sure that you guys are all included when I send them out. So I will add the board in there. And that's all. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, they had the spinning wheel one day, which was around the clock. Mm -hmm. I come in at four o'clock because he's going to care. They, well, they had so much fun. I mean, it was, I mean, it wasn't a big guess, but it was just the idea that they got to spin the wheel and, and get a cold or, or get a hat or something. I was just really, really sad I missed the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I will make sure that you guys are see that more often. Right? Okay, so oh, I think you were the one that brought up the, the, the executive session minutes. Did you bring that up? Yes, I'd like to. What I'm going to ask is the board can the new members read your, with your permission? Uh, past executive session minutes uh, with the understanding there's still uh, executive session minutes uh, hold to that same uh, quarter to catch ourselves up with some of these things that happened in the past for our understanding in the future. Do you have an opinion on that, Allison? Did you hear it? Yeah, I heard it. Um, so the executive session minutes belong to the board who heard the matter. Um, I don't think that Wyoming law has a clear answer to that. Uh, historically, I have advised boards that they're safer to uh, review the material in a way that doesn't include reviewing the executive session minutes, uh, which is the safer route. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that there's an answer I can give you that's black and white, unfortunately. Wyoming law is um, not established in a lot of areas. Some of these issues are only resolved through litigation. So. I'll ask a question to the board. Yeah, exactly. I've never seen anything. Uh, <laughs> I haven't either. Well, my understanding is executive session minutes of those that were in the executive session have to approve those minutes, and then they go into a sealed. Whoever keeps the minutes and locked or power, they want to keep them, but they're safe. Uh, so it's up to the procedure of the board on how the executive session minutes are handled once they're taken. Uh, historically, I have taken the minutes for the executive session for the board, and then uh, I have the board chair review them. Uh, I do have boards that uh, sign off on them. Uh, they're not something you would review and approve necessarily in public session. I agree. So it's something that if you want to discuss that further about how you'd like to handle it, that's entirely up to the board. Well, the judge would require those minutes. We would send them to you. If there was um, a law. Yeah, so I do have litigation where a judge did request executive session minutes and they were provided to the judge in camera so they didn't become a part of the record of the case, but the judge was able to consider them and rule on what she found. Is that helpful? Thank you. Yep. So I feel like this is something we need to think about. I have no problem. I just was 
the reason I was asking because things have happened in the past. Right, sure that, so maybe I'm not looking and thinking that I want to read minutes from five years ago. Right. But minutes from six months ago to the present or a year ago to the present might help some understanding. Yeah. So let's so remind us to revisit this okay. next next month where we've all thought about it and decide whether it's a good idea. Yeah. Does that does that sound yeah. like a good idea? Yeah. All right, do you think Nathan, are you think that's a good idea? Yeah. My impression of what Allison said is she didn't say no and she didn't say <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so I guess it's kind of up to what how brave we feel. I guess honestly I can say as a board member who's been here for two years, I've never seen the discussion in it, so we've never approved them. I don't know what's in them. Well, I just like, take out does your board chair that she does yeah, show them to that. Yes. So. The board chair has historically approved the minutes. And again, if this board wants to have a review of them and sign off, there are some boards we work with that do have each board member sign them. That's that's the minority, but it but that is a path you could take if you wanted. And the other issue is that you don't want the executive session minutes floating around. So that would have to be something that's done in an appropriate manner. So can I ask a question? Since we're on the topic of um, where are the minutes? Are they on site or somewhere else? Uh, I keep them in my uh, in my system. I have them archived. <coughs> okay. I have one other question. Yeah. Okay. And I don't oh, know if it's the proper time. I I advertise in the newspaper. Is there a reporting process that I have to fill out saying that I spent fifty five dollars on an ad for this? I think position. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know, Allison? Is there a reporting process? Usually, usually, the, uh, election um, and campaign reporting is done through the clerk. I think in the elections office locally. I know that because I ran for an election and I didn't spend any money and they contacted me and asked me where my report was because I didn't file one because I didn't spend any money, but they still would like a report. So. You think that's true in your hospital board? Yes, it's, it's through. Best. Yes. Okay. Mine was for the, um, mine was for the, uh, the college. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so anybody that put it on that, go talk to Becky. <laughs> okay, anything. So the next one um, is an H and H letter. Um, so uh, does anybody, am I the only one that has this? No, I think the letter we got on email, right? But probably the old board. I got a copy tonight. You got it. No, is it this? No, it's a different letter. Okay. Okay. You are correct. That's a different letter. All right. I got a letter tonight. So <laughs> who has the best voice? Like, I feel like me reading this, I don't think anybody will be able to hear it. Harry has the best voice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 we can all hear you. Okay. All right. Um, H and H Leadership Services. Um, on behalf of H and H Leadership Solutions, I would like to express our sincere appreciation of the opportunity to collaborate with the board, providers, leaders, and staff of Weston County Health Services. It has been a privilege to work alongside each such dedicated individuals who are committed to providing quality health care to your community. After careful consideration, H H Leadership Solutions has made the decision to complete our contractual arrangements and not pursue further agreements with WCHS. H H Leadership Solutions is committed to fulfilling our remaining contract obligations. This includes completing the CHRO placement, 
providing interim CHRO and COO through support through the contractual timeline. As of the date of this letter, here's an update on the status of our current agreements. The current Chief Human Resources Officer search is underway. Currently, three active candidates remain of four. One dropped out Friday following her watching the board meeting video. The interim CHRO's contract ends on June 25th, 2024. The interim COO has nine days remaining within the agreement, ending on May 24th, 2024. This is a planned and approved absence from Weston County Health Services between May 7th through 14th. The operational assessment will be completed with a recommendation summary to be sent to Randy Ladara later this week. Additionally, we are issuing notice of cancellation for the social media contract effective at the end of this month. This will allow for the representation of celebrations of hospital nurses and EMS weeks this month. Please consider this letter as formal notification of the termination of the social media contract. Moving forward, h h Leadership Solutions will not be entering into any further agreements with Weston County Health Services beyond our existing commitments. However, we would like to offer limited advisory services to WCHS in identifying individuals or agencies who can address the challenges WCHS is facing. This includes assistance in identifying physician and leadership placement firms, connecting WCHS with reputable board education agencies, and providing recommendations for IT vendor services. We believe that this advisory support will aid WCHS in navigating navigating their current circumstances and moves the organization towards a stable future. Thank you once again for the opportunity to collaborate with WCHS. If you have any questions or require further assistance, please do not hesitate to reach out. Signed, Charles Hall, Principal h h Leadership and Stephen Hartz, Principal h h Leadership. So that is a letter. Madam Chair, I have a question. Um, if the letter says they don't want to continue with anything with us, what is this proposal that we got today? Yes. Yeah, so that would be, they're actually, uh, not actually doing the hiring method. I mean, they recommend this person uh, that's going to be working. Yeah, but the education and everything now, they're not making any money on that. They're, just, they're more or less representing this person to move forward uh, with this decision and then find the leadership development. So, and that's something we go for. So, as somebody told me, Randy, that. Um, H and H had a advertisement up on their website. Um, is this what they were advertising for? Perhaps the officer, yes. And so, uh, if we don't, with them, if we don't agree to that, how does that work with them? Can already have it up, the advertisement up. I mean, uh, I mean, if you don't agree with it, you just don't approve the, the one that's going to be edited, the doing it over several months. But as Allison agreed and the board agreed, we need that education, not only for CAM, but for the organization from a compliance standpoint and leadership development. So this person is not with H&H, &H, correct? No, correct. Okay. And do we have more information somewhere on this who this person is that they're recommending? Yeah, and uh, on the time. Okay. Charles, on that. Aaron. They're okay. The, that is a CV. Okay. So we can, yeah, that's, can we just take it under advisement yeah. for right now? Yeah. 
So, so, okay. So, did we have this? We didn't have this on the agenda, right? Under privacy. Coach. Oh, under privacy. Coach. H and H has advertised two different advertisements for job offerings. What's the other one that you've seen? The other one they have is um, Chief Human Resource Officer in Newcastle for H and H leadership. Yeah, we know about that one. I didn't know about this one. No. Can I ask you a question? Do you hear me okay? Uh, yes. I'm, it's kind of like you're in a can, but I can hear you. Um, of, of the three remaining HR manager candidates, are you familiar with their resumes? Do they show um, HIPAA compliance as part of what they're experienced in doing? If I may, Pam wouldn't be able to speak. To that. Pam, Pam wouldn't be able to speak to that as I haven't provided a, a resumes to uh, anybody. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. Um, is there anything else we need to talk about? I've got through everything on this list, uh, except for this uh, CEO spring meeting, the May 18th, which is in two days. <laughs> so if anyone wants to go, we better. Denise? I'd also like to. Um, let everybody know that tomorrow, um, Friday, at from four to six, we are having a retirement party for Mike Carpenter in the cafeteria. So we would all love for you to to join us for okay, six or four to six. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Can we have a motion to move into executive session? Yes. Oh, please, yes, do. Yes. You, usually what we do is we move into executive session and then take it Okay, before or after. Either one's good. <laughs> is that fine with everybody? Do we have a motion? I, I, I make a motion we move into executive session. Okay. A second? I'll second. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Board, board, can we add to the motion for the reasons set forth on the agenda? Yes. You want us to state the state one or the law? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. We're going in executive session 164405A. I believe that's mine. We're going to be considered or receive information classified as a confidential. By law and can consider provider contracts. Okay, so thank you guys for coming home. We're going to leave it. Well, sir, it's been kind, and I'm glad that it's not happening anymore. In addition to the weekly printed version of the newsletter journal, we also promote our community and share important information on our award-winning website, newslj.com 
and in our weekly email newsletter, Nuke Now. We also connect with readers through various social media platforms and invite you to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can even take a look at a recent meeting of the City Council, School Board, or County Commission on our YouTube channel. We do hope that you will go to NewsLJ.com and subscribe today, and we look forward to making all of our great content available to you. But regardless of your level of support, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing your part to preserve a free and independent local press.